Right now, the rules behind political yard signs. What you need to know before staking out your opinion ahead of the midterms. Also, allegations of abuse and mistreatment at a Waukesha daycare. The employee now facing criminal charges. And this mid-August warmth is in stores to finish up the work week, but I'll break down how long these conditions will last. Good Friday morning, everyone. Welcome to News 3 Now this morning. I'm Chris Stanford. And I'm Leah Lynchine. Thanks for waking up with us, and happy Friday. You guys have made it. We're going to start off with Greg Barnhart and your first sworn forecast. It's kind of a muggy one out there, Greg, for, you know, mid-September. Yeah, we're only six days away from fall, so yeah. yeah, it certainly is muggy right now. If you look at right now the temperature change over the last 24 hours, we've seen at least 8 to 10 degree difference pretty much out east, a little bit not to the west because they were actually already warm yesterday. Dew points have also pretty much have risen about the same thing. So right now we're looking about 61 in Madison, low 60s, a few areas about the mid to upper 50s, but overall most are warmer this morning just because the winds have turned around and that air mass is starting to get warmer as we approach with the system. Visibility problems a little bit, US 60, Boscobel, maybe 151 going towards Platteville. Some areas of concern there, but most areas are still pretty good with visibility. We'll climb up to about 80 today in the afternoon with cloudy, partly sunny skies. And we see that uh, the humid conditions will last probably for another another week and then train chances coming in and I'll explain all this here in a little bit. All, all right. right. Greg Barnhart, thank you very much. We appreciate it. At 601 now, the state of Wisconsin has nearly a million dollars now thanks to a new federal grant aimed at suicide prevention. This is a grant that aims to prevent suicide. That will help make sure that your family members, your friends and members of the community receive crucial support. The Department of Health Services says suicide rates have increased 32% over the past decade. The money doesn't stop this year either. Wisconsin expects to receive close to the same amount each year for another four years. I'm excited that there's an opportunity within Suicide Prevention Month and, and with this new grant announcement for people to be talking about what more can be done. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health and need someone to talk to, the 988 Suicide and Crisis Hotline is available 24 hours a day. You can also use the Crisis Text Line by texting HOPELINE to 741-741. As the campaign season heats up, you'll be seeing more and more political yard signs around. You may have even thought about putting one up yourself. But there are some things to consider. Our political reporter, Will Keneally, has the do's and don'ts of how to stake your political views. In Walworth County, we have seven, eight, nine different messages. It's an uphill fight for the Democratic Party. It's a Republican county, but also very rural, which means plenty of land and space for those messages. They are put out um, with owner's permission on, you know, good, good locations, and then they're rotated every few weeks. So it's like a little mini uh, billboard. We caught up with them in Elkhorn this week to talk about their yard signs. We asked the state Republican Party too, but they didn't have anyone available for us. In Walworth County, Democrats say it's about choosing their words carefully to find common ground. Instead of concentrating strictly on the candidate, we are looking at values and how that ties into issues and how that ties into um, the candidates and why they should vote. This is absolutely the core of why there is free speech in the first place. That's UW Madison's Howard Schwaber. So you can do that in many different ways. March on a parade, sign a petition, or put in yard signs. People usually use yard signs for political expression. And political speech is, is what's sometimes called core speech. So if there is any kind of speech that's going to be protected, it will be political speech. But there are some limitations. Don't block traffic. Uh, don't be so loud that we can hear you five miles away, right? Don't light things on fire, anything, um, uh, even as part of a political protest. And in Madison, there are similar rules for what you can and can't do with yard signs. We regulate the method and not the message. And what that means is uh, size, height, placement, method of illumination. Matt Tucker heads the Building Inspection Division for the city, which checks to make sure that the yard signs are placed correctly. Placement that is unsafe, I think, is probably the most important thing. Um, placement that may block the vision of pedestrians or, um, or vehicles at intersections around corners. That generally means keeping the signs on your property, 10 feet off of the street. There's also a season. If you have a bunch of signs, the city asks that they be taken down right after the election. You can generally keep one non-commercial sign up the rest of the year. But what about content? What if a sign contains swear words, for example? 
That's something the government is allowed to regulate in order to prevent children from being exposed to it. Schwaber says the key is to not be obtrusive. And the analogy is a nuisance law. Uh, you can use your property. It's called quiet enjoyment. You can enjoy your property however you like, but not if it interferes with other people's ability to enjoy their property. Ultimately, there's latitude to largely put up whatever signs of support or opposition you want, whether you're a red dot in a blue sea or vice versa. So the billboards um, are important. These are important because people realize this is grassroots, this is homemade stuff, this is local stuff. Our Will Keneally reporting for us this morning. At 6.05, the political fight between Republicans and the White House over immigration is playing out between states right now. Buses carrying migrants arrived at Vice President Kamala Harris's home at the U.S. Naval Observatory in D.C. Dozens of people also arrived on charter flights to Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts yesterday. This is part of what Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is calling a relocation program. We're not a sanctuary state. What would be the best is for Biden to do his damn job and secure the border. Republican governors interfering in that process and using migrants as political pawns is, uh, is shameful. The spring, Republican governors in Texas and Arizona have also transported several thousand migrants and asylum seekers to places like New York, Chicago, and Washington, D.C. Those are all cities with Democratic mayors and sanctuary city designations. Looking ahead now, Britain is preparing for its first state funeral since Prime Minister Winston Churchill died in 1965. In the days leading up to the final goodbye for the Queen, tens of thousands of people from around the world are in London. They're waiting hours to see the Queen's coffin. At some points, the line is more than four miles long. She's just yeah. such a great woman. You know, a special person, and uh, we've known her for 70 <laughs> years. She was my age when she became queen, and I can only imagine how much she had to learn and sacrifice for that. Meanwhile, police teams and anti-terror squads are preparing for the biggest security challenge the country has ever seen. The funeral is scheduled for Monday. And among the 2,000 people attending are President Biden and French President Emmanuel Macron and several other heads of state. A smaller private burial service is planned for after the funeral at Windsor Castle. 607 now, a private school in Waukesha is closing indefinitely as authorities carry out a criminal investigation involving reports of physical abuse there. Julia Fellow reports. Heather Miller appeared in Waukesha County Court Thursday accused of physically abusing a child. When I say that it's awful, it seems to me to indicate that there's so much awful that I don't even know how to explain it. A criminal complaint states the incident happened August 17th at the Lawrence School in Waukesha. Miller was a lead teacher in the infant room. An employee told police she witnessed Miller telling an infant he was disgusting. The witness claimed when Miller put the child down for a nap, she concealed his crib from a security camera, picked him up, and then slammed him face down into the crib, then held him down to the point that it sounded like the child struggled to breathe. The witness says she ran to get help and told the facility director and assistant director what was going on, but nothing was done. The next week, the witness told the child's mother that he was not safe there. According to court records, the parents of that child reported he was lethargic, fussy and unwell for two weeks. They eventually took him to Children's Hospital, but a doctor did not find any injuries. People trust the most important thing that they have, quite frankly, the reason why they go to work every day, the reason why they do things in life, to places just like this to ensure that their loved ones are taken care of. And when you abuse that trust, that is, that is an aggravated Factor. Renee Martinez says she took her son to the child care center until an incident happened in December 2018. And I had found out from an employee that my son, a couple weeks prior, uh, was left outside. Sorry, alone and unattended, and he had just turned three. Martinez says she felt alone, but she is speaking publicly now to encourage others to come forward. Just speak up. If you see something wrong, speak up. Those are people's children, and we just have to protect everybody's children. In the complaint, Miller and other staff members denied any wrongdoing or knowledge of the incident. During today's appearance, the state noted Miller had been warned about her rigid approach by the licensing agency back in April. Our Julia Fellow reporting here.
Three other staff members may potentially face criminal charges. Waukesha police are still reviewing the evidence. We are wrapping up Ford Madison week with an announcement of our big grand prize this morning. You can win a pair of tickets, autographed team scarf, uh, team jersey worth more than 300 bucks. It's your final day to enter. Just head to channel3000.com for your chance to win. 609 now. We are keeping an eye on the morning commute. The weather shouldn't have any impact, though. There is a chance of rain, though, this weekend. Greg's going to break that down when we come back. And still ahead, some big changes coming to Lambeau Field this season. What you'll see and taste. It's a little different. Save big on quality Smith Brothers furniture at Wanakee Furniture ETC, the number one Smith Brothers dealer in the nation. That's right, for square footage, we sell more Smith Brothers than anyone else. So let our design experts customize a look for you during the Smith Brothers factory authorized sale at Wanakee Furniture ETC. First, we found out that Radical Tim Michael supports Wisconsin's 1849 abortion ban. But you wouldn't support exceptions for rape or incest? Uh, that's correct. Now we found out his foundation funds a group working to outlaw birth control and ban abortion, even to save the life of the mother. And his family foundation funds a group that uses cell phone data to track women if they go to abortion centers. Vote no on Radical Tim Michaels. The 2023 Ford F-150 trucks are coming. Meaning more ways to haul, tow, go, and do. And with more ways than ever to make it your own. Plus, if you order now, you'll lock in your price and lock in your rate. Do more in a 2023 Ford F-150. Custom order yours today. Lock in 2.9 for 60 and get 500 retail order bonus cash when you order a Ford F-150. Only at your Wisconsin and UP Ford dealers. I am crushing this to-do list. Let me see. Smart home upgrade? Mm -hmm. Home gym? Check. Well, what about the windows? Uh, Cross something important off your list with energy efficient windows for just $129 a month. Now is the perfect time to get your home ready for fall and keep some cash in your pocket. Windows for $129 a month and soon. Call now. Call quality windows, siding and doors. Call 866 for Feltco. And now, please welcome Adam Montoya. from scratch freshness like Papa Murphy's. Because when you go all in, people notice. Go all in with the triple pet pizza for just $11.99. Papa Murphy's, change the way you pizza. Joe Biden on Medicare for All. It's gonna raise taxes on middle class people. Medicare for All would double your income taxes, ban employer provided and union health plans, and bankrupt Medicare for seniors. Mandela Barnes still supports Bernie Sanders' socialist takeover of your health care. Medicare for All is the easiest way to get us to universal health care. Mandela Barnes, more liberal than Joe Biden, way too liberal for Wisconsin. I'm Ron Johnson and I approve this message. Save big on quality Smith Brothers furniture at Wanakee Furniture ETC, the number one Smith Brothers dealer in the nation. That's right, for square footage, we sell more Smith Brothers than anyone else. So let our design experts customize a look for you during the Smith Brothers factory authorized sale at Wanakee Furniture ETC. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. We would like to thank everybody who's donated so far to our Coats for Kids campaign. We got some brand new numbers in. So fresh, we didn't even have time to update the graphic. <laughs> uh, so we got 95 <laughs> coats since our last update. That's nearly twice as many coats compared to the last tally. So our total this morning is at 1,434 coats. We got a long way to go though, folks, and we need your help. Can't do it without you. The Community Action Coalition needs those coats for kids specifically. Uh, all you got to do is drop them off at any area clinky cleaners. You also can go to the coalition's Amazon wish list to find a selection of brand new coats for the kiddos. You can find a uh, link to that list right now at channel3000.com slash coats for kids. That's coats with a K. The goal is 5,000 kid-sized winter coats this year. We've got until October 8th. 
A century and a half old movie theater is celebrating its grand reopening tonight in Marquette County. The Montello movie theater first opened as an opera house back in 1878. It was closed during the pandemic but was resold and is hosting a big return to the community tonight with food, prizes, and its first movie showing in three years. You can watch Back to the Future tonight, hey, Back to the right. Future 2 Saturday night, and even check out a DeLorean replica time machine out front. Doors open at 5.30. The community out there, very excited for this reopening. Nice choice in movies. Back yes, very future. clever. Classic. Uh, I love it. Uh, yeah, go uh, support the Monticello Theater uh, as they uh, get back open. <laughs> Greg, how is it out there tonight? Actually warm, humid. <laughs> for mid September it definitely is. Uh, but uh, I guess you won't complain in about a week for those cool weathers. We'll actually get some cooler weather coming here soon. But in the meantime, we have the system out to the west that's taking its time getting here. And there's just kind of waves riding along it and as they go northeast. And they kind of fall apart as they get closer here. So overall, the range has kept into Iowa, Minnesota, all the way up to the Arrowhead of Minnesota, too. And over time, we're going to start seeing these come get closer. But at the same time, you can kind of see as they push for their east, they fall apart. So over time through 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, we're still going to see some action overnight, but a lot of this still, once again, is going to fall apart as it pushes across. You can kind of see that wave comes across. The, the, the background actually falls apart. We just get cloud cover through about 3 p.m. So there's a few showers here and there, but overall, Saturday is not going to be overly too bad, just warm and humid. It's the next one that we're watching that way that comes up Saturday night is the one that stands the best shot to see actually rainfall. For temperatures this morning, we're going to see temperatures climb up to about 81 at Lone Rock by one. 1 p.m. overall upper 70s will be in the low 80s in the afternoon as it goes to 3 p.m. We're still in the low 80s, upper 70s. Southerly winds with some cloud cover. So far, not much in the way of showers. But overnight, we might see some showers come across. But once again, very light, very spotty. Temperatures overall tonight will probably be in the mid-60s, even more humid as the cloud cover is overhead, too. And then tomorrow, once again, spotty showers coming across. You can see another wave comes across about 12 to 1. It falls apart once again. So we're just seeing that kind of trend through Saturday until we get to Saturday night. And then that's what we're going to really look for the chances to start beginning, as you can see, towards the end there. Iowa is approaching here Saturday night, Saturday night. So overall, rainfall chances, that's what we're looking at. Nothing significant like we saw last weekend, but still, we should see some rainfall from this. And then once we get warm up Tuesday, we should see a cool down and maybe below average temperatures, low to mid 60s by the end of next week there. Yeah, six days away from fall, but boy, it's coming in hot now, huh? Yeah, it is. I mean, 80, 81, that's more like mid-August high temperatures for what we typically see is around 73, 74 right now. I'm looking forward to the 60s. Greg Barnhart, thank you very much. 617, the Packers home opener happening Sunday at Lambeau Field, speaking of fall, and it's a border battle against the Chicago Bears. For offensive lineman Luke Patrick, it's his return to Lambeau Field, but wearing a different jersey. I know it's going to be a storyline, me going back there and all that, but... Um, it's pretty cool to be an honorary captain for this game and um, be out there on uh, Lambeau with my guys. The Bears are coming into Sunday's game with a season win already under their belt against the 49ers. Not the case for the Packers, as if we needed the reminder. They're hoping to bounce back from last week's loss to the Vikings. Kickoff scheduled for 7:20. Fans will get their first taste of new foods of the season at concession menus across Lambeau for Sunday's game. CBS's Katie Amrine had the hard assignment of official TV taste tester. So we have a jalapeno popper grilled cheese with chorizo sausage strips. Then we have flaming Hot Cheetos mac and cheese with chorizo sour cream and cheese on top and then coming down into kind of more of that stadium favorites so we have a johnsonville uh, wisconsinite we call it um, it's got the sausage strip jam on it some warm cheese curds a pretzel bun just kind of everything wisconsin these are just three of 13 new menu items being introduced to lambo concession stands this football season delaware north executive chef zach laudebeck and his culinary staff have been cooking up ideas for the menu during the off season as the weather gets colder, I think people are looking for some of those more handheld items and something that's going to warm them up a little bit. Um, and we just tried to do a lot more grab and go so it's ready for the guests right away, stays hot. I had the opportunity to sample each item. My personal favorite is the barbecue chipper. Mm. Packers representatives say they hope the variety of food will satisfy the palate of every fan. Part of our wish for the experience here at Lambeau Field on game day is to have each part of your visit be 
top notch. Each year we try and improve that. When you head to a concession stand for a, a food item or beverage, we want that one to be efficient. Well, let's have the food be wonderful. We are very pleased to see what, they, what Zach and his team have cooked up this year and uh, we know the fans will be excited. The concessions are available at the majority of stands on game days all season long. That was Katie Amrine reporting at Lambeau. The new foods are also at the new Miller Lite End Zone Bar on the main concourse. Ooh, feeling hungry this morning. Chris, what was your favorite? Uh, it all looks good. I mean, they do an outstanding job of uh, always introducing like some new flavors into it while keeping like the traditional stadium foods uh, in mind. And yeah, I can't uh, go, you can't go wrong with mac and cheese, can't go wrong with Johnsonville. No. Delicious options there. It's, it. it's 620 now. Some Wisconsin breweries are teaming up to raise awareness and money to help those experiencing domestic violence. Milwaukee-based Third Space Brewery will donate $1 for every pint of the brew, one in four, to domestic abuse intervention services. So they created this beer recipe and then offered it up for any breweries wanting to participate. Here in Dane County, Delta Beer Lab took them up on the offer. You can find this beer available in Delta's tap room at restaurants and at liquor stores starting September 21st. 620 now. Coming up next, uh, Lost Cat is back home this morning. The video of its return that you won't want to miss. And ahead in our next half hour, allegations of racism. What led local artists to demand the director of Madison's Museum of Contemporary Art to resign? Stay with us. Call for action only on News 3 Now. Cobus and Buses, now hiring. My name's Mike Williams. I've been driving school bus off and on for 21 years. Here at our terminal, we're kind of like a family too. Somebody has an issue with a bus, other people kick in and help and get the job done. Looks like they finally got rid of that trip hazard. They pump it full of mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Where are the patched holes? Where's the splashed mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Concrete lifting technologies can quickly raise and level any concrete surface using cutting-edge foam technology made in Wisconsin. Fast and accurate and eco-friendly. How did those guys do it? Where are the holes? Where's the mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Dot com. Nothing beats a great night's sleep on a new Beautyrest mattress from Steinhoffels. Right now, you can get a Beautyrest Queen mattress for only $449 or get $200 in Steinhoffels cash when you upgrade to the redesigned Beautyrest Black. More luxurious and comfortable than ever. And with Steinhoffels special financing, your mattress just got more affordable. Isn't it time you got a great night's sleep? Relax, it's Steinhoffels. It changes your entire world. I know because I was a victim myself. So to think there are people like Senator Ron Johnson in Washington who'd make it harder. Ron Johnson supported the Supreme Court's decision outlawing abortion in Wisconsin, even for victims of rape and incest, allowing doctors and nurses to be prosecuted. When I think about other victims and what they're going to have to go through because of Ron Johnson, he doesn't share our values. s and is responsible for the content of this ad. Precision engineering, rigorous attention to detail. A Bryant Evolution heating system is so well designed, it's as much of a joy to install as it is to use. Good to go. Bryant, whatever it takes. In the Oregon area, contact Tarkenton Brothers Heating and Sheet Metal for quality comfort solutions. Back by popular demand, Hy-Vee drive through Flu Shot Clinics. Just follow the signs in your Hy-Vee parking lot to get your flu shot right from your car. It's easy, convenient, and no appointment or prescription is necessary. drive through Flu Shots are offered on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 7 p.m. Or get your flu shot inside your Hy-Vee pharmacy at any time with no appointment necessary. Plus, when you get your flu shot at Hy-Vee, you get a 20 cent Hy-Vee fuel saver. Cobison Buses, now hiring. Working with Cobison, it's definitely been great because of the flexibility. If you do need time off, they work around you. They, they definitely try to make it a company that's based for you. Visit cobison.com to apply. Welcome back. We always ask you to share your morning with us. Second Crop Creative 
posting this on social media. Just a stunning picture. It looks right out of a Lisa Frank coloring book. Honestly, Greg's been talking all week about how the West uh, has been kind of sweeping in the fog, excuse me, the smoke from the wildfires out there, and it's really been impacting our sunrises and sunsets. Along with a full moon, Chris, you can't ask for much more. Yeah, what a great photo. Uh, Second Crop Creative never disappoints. We want to thank them for being a frequent submitter. Use the hashtag MyNews3Morning when you post on social media, and we'll show our favorites on the air. Okay, 625. After a New York family moved to a new home, their typically indoor-outdoor cat got lost while outside and couldn't find her way home. That is until they had an unlikely visitor at their door. Look at this. Oh, are you kidding? That is Lily. Lily was missing for four days, then comes back and rings the doorbell outside of the home, all captured on their ring doorbell camera. How about that, Leah? Uh, this is probably the best day of their life. Could you imagine losing? Well, you could. You just did lose imagine. your dog. I would be horrified. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, we lost our, uh, our, our tiny little uh, dog. Uh, while I was off uh, for a couple of days, uh, just for a couple of hours, maybe Still. about an hour total's longest hour uh, seemingly of my life, but I'm uh, glad to have her back. So. Day ruiner. Not Day ruiner. Doorbell. She's not that smart. Oh, gosh. Well, hey, at <laughs> least uh, it was a decent day to get lost there, Greg. Decent weather. Yeah, pretty much, like I said, bus forecast right there. Looks good. Short weather today. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Greg. Keep it here, folks. We'll be back right after this. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Earn a 30 cent high V fuel saver for every $60 you spend. That's a 30 cent fuel saver this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Check out HyVDeals.com for more deals. It changes your entire world. I know because I was a victim myself. So to think there are people like Senator Ron Johnson in Washington who'd make it harder. Ron Johnson supported the Supreme Court's decision outlawing abortion in Wisconsin, even for victims of rape and incest, allowing doctors and nurses to be prosecuted. When I think about other victims and what they're going to have to go through because of Ron Johnson, he doesn't share our values. SP is responsible for the content of this ad. If you have advanced non-small cell lung cancer, your first treatment could be a chemo-free combination of two immunotherapies that works differently. It could mean a chance to live longer. Opdiva Plus Ear Voice for adults newly diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer that is spread, test positive for pd one and does not have an abnormal EGFR or ALK gene. Together, Opdiva Plus Ear Voice helps your immune system launch a response that fights cancer in two different ways. Opdiva Plus Ear Voice equals a chance for more time together, more family time, more time to to remember. Updevo and Yervoy can cause your immune system to harm healthy parts of your body during and after treatment. These problems can be severe and lead to death. See your doctor right away if you have a cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, irregular heartbeat, diarrhea, constipation, severe stomach pain, nausea or vomiting, dizziness, fainting, eye problems, extreme tiredness, changes in appetite, thirst or urine, rash, itching, confusion, memory problems, muscle pain or weakness, joint pain, flushing or fever. These are not all the possible side effects. Problems can occur together and more often when Updevo is used with Yervoy. Tell your doctor about all medical conditions, including immune or nervous system problems, if you've had or plan to have an organ or stem cell transplant or received chest radiation. Here's to a chance to live longer. Ask your doctor about the combination of two immunotherapies, Opdivo plus Yervoy. Thank you to all those in our clinical trials. Attention foodies. With this fusion of prime rib steak, melted provolone, and other magical melty stuff, Arby's is now officially a fusion restaurant. Chef Smooch, Arby's, we have the meat. Look, we knew the other side would make up lies about me to scare you. Now they're claiming I want to defund the police and abolish ICE. That's a lie. I'll make sure our police have the resources and training they need to keep our community safe. And that our communities have the resources to stop crime before it happens. I'll bring back manufacturing. And I'll pass a middle class tax cut. And if that's too scary for Washington, then so be it. I'm Mandela Barnes, and I approve this message. Earn a 30 cent high V fuel saver for every $60 you spend. That's 
a 30 cent fuel saver. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Check out HyVDeals.com for more deals. Right now, controversy is surrounding the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art. The new developments as artists band together. New rules to make sure everyone has access to the polls this election season. What you'll notice here in Madison when you cast your vote. And fall is only six days away, but the tempers will feel more like mid-August. I'll show you how long this warm weather will last. You made it, folks. Friday's here. Good morning. Welcome to News 3 Now this morning. Thanks for joining us to end your week. I'm Leah lynch -Eyde. And I'm Chris Stanford. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, Greg is here this morning to tell us what we can expect today as we head into the weekend. Greg? Yeah, it's it's a warm one. I mean, considering that we are now only six days away from fall, so uh, considering that we're waking up to 61 or 63 degrees where we should be like about 52, 53. So it is warm. As you see, temperatures have kind of lowered down to lower 60s, a few areas mid to upper 50s, but overall we are warmer than yesterday and above average if we zoom into Dane County right now. 61 in Perry, 61 in Madison, and then obviously 66 in Sauk City right now. Too. So overall low to mid 60s, pretty common. We are seeing a little bit more visibility. US 60, State Road 60 going to Boswell, one and a quarter. You've got some visibility issues out there. Otherwise, most other areas are seeing good visibility driving this morning. So as the bus stop, there is no really issues today. Short weather really as you get up to about 80, 81 degrees. So overall, a really nice day to speak of that. We're in the mid-September. Current condition 61, 58 dew point. That's about six degrees higher than we were yesterday. And looking ahead, we should be about 76 by noon climbing up to about 81 today. So like I said, warm from mid-September. We're 10 degrees above average. Chances of rain coming. Looks like Saturday night to Sunday, and I'll fill you in all this good info information here in a little bit. All right, thank you, Greg. To noon details now about an officer involved fatal shooting in Adams County. We now know who fired their weapon last week. Deputy Jacob Bean is currently on administrative assignment. Bean is a six-year veteran of the force. Independent investigators say that he killed 61-year-old Brian Childers. According to the DOJ update, officers got a call about an armed man walking down the road on September 7th. When Deputy Bean approached him, Childers reportedly pulled out his gun. That's when Bean fired. Deputy Bean was wearing a body camera, though that footage has not been released at this point. Investigators will turn over their report to the Adams County District Attorney now, who will determine if any charges will be filed. An update out of Dane County, District Attorney Ishmael Ozan says he expects to announce next week whether any charges will be filed against officers involved in the controversial arrest and shooting of Quadron Wilson. This happened back in February, six months ago on Madison's east side. During a Dane County board meeting, Ozan said he had reached a charging decision, but did not say what that decision was. A third police ch chase in uh, just a week in Dodge County. The latest happened in Beaver Dam involving a stolen vehicle. It started yesterday morning on the city's north side. The suspect led police on a Highway 151 and County Highway G. That chase ended back in the city where police arrested the driver. It was Saturday that Dodge County reported another chase. This one, they were uh, going after a driver on State Highway 33. That chase ended on Highway 151. And then a week ago, a chase that reached 90 miles an hour also happened right through the city of Beaver Dam. It ended on Highway 151 as well. 633 now, a group of UW-Madison students and faculty is coming to the defense of local black artists. They say were mistreated by the Madison Museum of Contemporary Arts. The artists even have a website now detailing their, quote, shameful experience with the museum, plus a list of demands for change. To Halil Mawadeen reports. It's an envelope addressed to the executive director of the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art. Dear Christina Brungart and the Momoka Executive Committee. Inside is an open letter signed by dozens of alumni, students, and faculty from UW's art and art history departments. We echo the collective in saying that your response is beyond disappointing. A show of support for a group of artists who took part in the museum's Wisconsin Triennial Exhibit, Ain't I a Woman, which sought to highlight black women artists in the state. I felt really disappointed just knowing the caliber of artists that have come through here and witnessing a moment where these artists were treated differently. Following claims of repeated mistreatment by the museum, including an improper response to the damage and theft seen here of one of the exhibitioner's artwork. By the end of August, almost half of the Triennial's participants pulled out. Soon after, the museum released a statement apologizing for the damage to the Lada G's artwork, but called accusations of institutional racism, quote, inappropriate and unfounded. 
I would describe it like watching a fire start and be left unattended. But three weeks later, in a statement released yesterday, they said the following. Momoka's board recognizes that its apologies to date have offered little consolation. The board knows, understands, and recognizes the need for action. They say to that end, the museum has launched a truth and reconciliation project to address institutional racism within Momoka and the root causes of the conflict. I want to see these changes playing out because saying one thing and doing another thing is a behavior that I've, they have demonstrated before. To Halil Moadine reporting, the Ain't I a Woman exhibit will continue to display the works of remaining artists through the first week of October. To campaign 2022 now, Senator Ron Johnson and other Republicans are trying to distance themselves from a federal abortion ban recently proposed by Senator Lindsey Graham. Senator Johnson, who voted to restrict abortion at 20 weeks, won't say if he'd back the 15-week ban. He says the issue should be left to the states. Wisconsin has reverted back to an 1849 law that outlaws the procedure almost entirely. Senator Johnson told CNN that he wants some more exceptions added. You support the uh, Wisconsin 1849 law that bans abortion. I support this going out to the states mm -hmm. and letting we the people decide. Okay, that's the law on the books right now. I support exceptions, which this doesn't have. Uh, but again, we will have this. Uh, determined by the people in right. 50 states. Republicans hope voters will view the Democratic position as extreme since they do not support restrictions even in the third trimester of a pregnancy. Meanwhile, Johnson's challenger, Mandela Barnes, is releasing a new series of endorsements from law enforcement. They come amid consistent attacks from conservatives on his stance on police policy. We sat down with a retired police officer who is endorsing Barnes. He says Barnes' plans to invest more in training and social workers to support police are the right way forward. A lot of people think police are all conservatives. I know that's not true. And I believe that funding and attacking those root causes of crime is a better uh, way of uh, addressing issues and helping police do their jobs. Conservatives have criticized Barnes for his connection to left-wing Democrats who want to defund the police. We've fact-checked those claims in our Reality Check series, which you can find on channel3000.com. Senator Johnson responding to those new endorsements with a statement saying, quote, violent crime continues to surge in Wisconsin. I will always stand with law enforcement to protect our communities. It is National Disability Voting Rights Week, and Madison leaders are highlighting resources to support disabled voters. Last week, the Wisconsin Elections Commission approved a new set of rules allowing voters with disabilities to get help from others when submitting absentee ballots. Madison's mayor now calling the decision a win for a group that historically faced significant barriers when voting. If voters with disabilities voted at the same rate as people without disabilities, they would represent a voting block of 1.75 million voters. However, historically, there have been significant gaps in voter turnout for people with disabilities. Madison's deputy clerk, Jim Verbix, says that there are many accommodations the city can make for voters, including absentee ballots in Braille, allowing curbside voting for those who have difficulty standing, and helping people with marking ballots. 6.38 on your Friday morning. The weather shouldn't have an impact on the morning commute today. We will see if there are any slowdowns, though, impacting the commute. And Greg is tracking some warmer temps and if we could see a couple of showers this weekend. Plus, sports director Zach Hanley bringing us the Coach of the Week out of Columbus this morning. Stay with us. News 3 Now this morning. We'll be right back. Ashley's Fall Scratch-Off promotion is happening now. Come in now for your scratch card that could be worth up to $5,000. Plus, get 78% off clearance items. Plus, 60-month special financing. Plus, doorbuster deals. Plus, fast delivery. Don't miss these savings. Ashley. By some measures, our economy is doing great. We've reached the lowest unemployment in state history. We have a record budget surplus. But there's another side, too. Rising prices for groceries, gas, and medications. Folks, that's a problem. That's why I have a plan to cap prescription drug prices, aggressively prosecute price gouging, and cut taxes by another 10% for working families. It's the right thing to do for Wisconsin and our economy. Reviews are very important. It really reflects on how we're handling customers at Precision Door. It's feeling like I'm helping out my neighbor. 
quality service quickly from a name you can trust. Precision door service, a name you can trust. It's your home and everything should be just right. I'm Brent Ziegler for H&R Carpets and Flooring, where our design staff will help you choose just the right flooring and save you 500 bucks. It's a pretty fabulous sale. Come see us. Always have loved kids, like having a daycare, extending our family, having another kid, and just kind of made sense to do more improvements and add along the way. Having that availability to put back into our home from the home equity basically saved us. Got a you know, privacy fence that provides safety for our kids and the daycare kids, and yep. I don't got to put the dog on a leash anymore. It's a nice feeling letting my daycare just get out and just Play. run free. And that there is just another example that the Tackle Party Union has had our back. Look, we knew the other side would make up lies about me to scare you. Now they're claiming I want to defund the police and abolish ICE. That's a lie. I'll make sure our police have the resources and training they need to keep our community safe. And that our communities have the resources to stop crime before it happens. I'll bring back manufacturing. And I'll pass a middle-class tax cut. And if that's too scary for Washington, then so be it. I'm Mandela Barnes, and I approve this message. It's Furniture and Appliance Mart scratch-off promotion. Come in for your scratch card worth up to $5,000. Plus, buy any LG washer and get the dryer free. Plus, 60-month special financing. Plus, fast delivery at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley off the Beltline in East Springs Drive. It all comes down to the final drive. News 3 now brings you the big play highlights and scores from Southern Wisconsin high school football action. Don't miss the final drive. Fridays on News 3 now at 10. Many people dread going there. But this employee makes visits to the DMV as easy as... One, two, and three. Mark Kane meets a photographer whose approach is picture perfect. Great, very well done. Monday on News 3 Now at 10. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. Welcome back, folks. The oldest food fest in the Midwest kicks off this weekend, and it's a true Wisconsin event for you to check out. We're talking about the Greene County Cheese Days in Monroe. Live music starts this afternoon with what else but a master yodeler taking the stage at noon on the historic square in town. There's a kids parade today. The main parade is scheduled for Sunday at 1230. And of course, in between, you can find every cheesy snack you can think of on hand, from cheesecake on a stick to a grilled gourmet cheese. Head on over to cheesedays.com for all the details. Yum. Sold. Sir, logging on to cheesedays.com as we speak. Should call that Leah. Leah Days right there. <laughs> yeah. They're synonymous, you know. Uh, you should be the honorary MC every year. You better believe it. <laughs> all right, here's Greg now. You've been talking about this system uh, out to the, the west, Greg. What's going on with it this morning? Yeah, it's uh, it's transitioning. It's basically, when it comes from tropical to extra tropical, tropical is when it's more warm core system, and now it comes up here and beats a cold core system, similar to what we get in the Midwest. But this is much stronger. We're looking at low pressures about I think 930. Nine millibars at one point, and they're expecting 70, 89 mile per hour winds along the west coast of Alaska, which will create quite a bit of coastal uh, flooding going on. So that's one story. The other story is Fiona up there. This is not as strong right now. It's just a tropical storm as it kind of shifts to, to the northwest, moving the Leeward Islands. Got a tropical storm warnings. So so far, kind of disorganized, but that's the tropical system that's kind of recurving. So we'll see if it becomes a factor here for the U.S. in a little bit. Otherwise, we're looking at southwesterly flow aloft, southerly winds at the surface. We have moisture coming. That system out west is taking its time to get here. Wave after wave is coming. Right now we're going to have one come through today. Not much going on. We could see a shower or two tonight, but overall a lot of it falls apart until the main system gets closer. So this is Saturday morning. Another one comes through again. Once again, a shower or two tomorrow, but chances are still pretty low. Once again, falls apart. The next one, the main one with the front, is actually coming towards Saturday night, and that's the one that will probably produce the best shot for rainfall for the area. But once again, we're not going to see anything like we saw last Sunday either. So today we're looking at temperatures around 80 as you get towards noon in the afternoon, a lot low 80s for a high temp with cloud cover, high cloud cover, mainly humid conditions. That'll continue through high school football. Probably won't see any rainfall going on, but cloud cover more humid than typically would see. And then overnight we could see a shower to come across, but nothing widespread, nothing real strong either. And then tomorrow towards the Badger game, we're probably going to see more of another 
Typical day of cloud cover with a shower or two in the area, but once again, nothing strong, nothing heavy as temperatures get up into the low 80s. And then as we get closer to Saturday night is when that wave is coming through, and that should, should be the best shot. As this graphic shows you, as we get towards Saturday night, Sunday morning, the best chance for widespread rainfall, thunderstorms, and there afterwards, we should see a couple days of still warm conditions until really the main weather pattern kind of shifts towards the end of the week and we get back into the low to mid 60s. And once again, our average temperature right now is about 72, 73. So that will be below average. Okay. Greg, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. This week's Coach of the Week is Columbus Football's Andrew Selgrade. The Cardinals are ranked second in Division Four and have outscored their opponents 206 to 19. But Selgrade's more focused on daily improvement, which is why he reminds his team to keep building. Here's sports director Zach Hanley. That, go. Columbus football. You need to be aggressive. You need to fly to the ball. And you got to hit. Get has a certain swagger to them. Be stronger, bigger, faster than the other team and just go out there and just win on Fridays. But don't mistake the confidence for cockiness. <laughs> because the Cardinals are always working to better themselves. We're not happy with the status quo. We're not happy with what we did last week. We're never content with just being average. That mentality comes from Andrew Selgrade. To answer your question, right? Who asked just one thing of his team. How do you do that? Well, you got to keep building. Ready, ready. Ready. Keep building. Oh, we always try to have A days, A practices. Instead of if we had a C practice, we're not going to keep building. Ready. Stacking good practices on good practices. Our goal is to continue to get better every week. We want to be playing our best football come playoff time. So every week you got to keep building. So when it's all said and done, the Cardinals are the best versions of themselves. It doesn't take much to be a great person, so he always just focuses on not just football at practice, but building us up as young men. Whether they're on the field or not. What do you do with those opportunities that are given to you? Uh, how are you going to build a legacy? How are you going to grow as a person, as a human? You do as Selgrade would say. Good. And keep building. Sports director Zach Hanley there. Nominate your coach to be our next coach of the week. Just go to channel3000.com slash sports, fill out the nomination form, or you can email Zach directly. Remember, it can be any sport at any level. Hey, here's your chance to gain 15 minutes of fame on the court. Fiserv Forum looking for the next great voice to sing the national anthem for Bucks games. The Bucks are holding open auditions next month for anthem singers for this upcoming season. They're taking place during three different time slots on Wednesday, October 5th at 7 a.m., at noon, and 5 p.m. Anybody's allowed to give it a go. Though kids under 18, you need permission from a guardian. We have all the information you need up on channel3000.com. You're going to try out, right? You better believe it. And bring that vibrato. I'm a shoe in <laughs> Hey, we are wrapping up Ford Madison Week with an announcement of our grand prize this morning. You can win a pair of tickets, autographed team scarf, and a team jersey worth more than 300 bucks. It's your final day to enter, folks, so just head to channel3000.com for your chance to win. Pretty cool items there. I'd love those. Last day to get involved. 647 coming up in the morning sprint. Some big traffic changes coming to the downtown area for the weekend because of an event in town. We'll tell you where to avoid. If you've got a little kiddo turning three soon, let us know so we can show their picture on TV. We'll be right back. This portion of News 3 Now is sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Warren's, Wisconsin. Stoughton Health's Breast Cancer Risk Assessment can help you understand your personal breast cancer risk and strategies to reduce your risk. The screening is a free service Stoughton Health offers to help women take charge of their health. Do you feel safe? Mandela Barnes would eliminate cash bail, setting accused criminals free into the community before trial, even with shootings, robberies, carjackings, violent attacks on our police, more than 300 murders last year alone. Yet Barnes has even supported defunding the police. Mandela Barnes, he stands with them, not us. Senate Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Now's the perfect time to get your roofing project off the ground with Feldco. As the seasons change, you want to be sure your house is ready for the harsh Midwestern weather ahead. For just $2.79 a month, you can protect your home and your family.
Valley with a new Feltco roof. So get your fall started off on the right foot today with Feltco. Roofing for $279 a month and soon. Hurry, call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feltco. <laughs> Like free delivery from Hy-Vee Isles Online with the Hy-Vee Plus Premium Membership. For a limited time only, get $50 off your annual membership with promo code Mahomes. Joe Biden on Medicare for All. It's going to raise taxes on middle class people. Medicare for All would double your income taxes, ban employer provided and union health plans, and bankrupt Medicare for seniors. Mandela Barnes still supports Bernie Sanders' socialist takeover of your health care. Medicare for All is the easiest way to get us to universal health care. Mandela Barnes, more liberal than Joe Biden, way too liberal for Wisconsin. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. Stoughton Health's Breast Cancer Risk Assessment can help you understand your personal breast cancer risk and strategies to reduce your risk. The screening is a free service Stoughton Health offers to help women take charge of their health. Save big at Wanakee Furniture ETC. 651, time for the morning sprint. It's going to be a busy weekend on the Near East side for the Willie Street Fair. Williamson Street will be closed between South Livingston and South Ingersoll Streets all weekend long. Specifically between 9 a.m. and 11 p.m. Saturday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday. There are some more side street closures on Sunday for the parade. You can find the details on the closures and the festival up on channel3000.com. The flag of the Ho-Chunk Nation now flying over Bascom Hill on campus. In attendance yesterday for the flag raising, UW Chancellor Jennifer Manukin, who you just saw, and Ho-Chunk Nation President Marlon White Eagle. The flag will fly for a week and then again in October to mark Indigenous Peoples Day and all throughout November for National Native American Heritage Month. Madison's leaders are speaking out against vandalism at a former Alders home that led to his immediate resignation. Common Council President Keith Furman said, quote, threats and vandalism are not productive or democratic ways of engaging public officials, and we're disappointed that Alder Halverson's family is experiencing this. It was just last week, though, that Furman and other members said they were, quote, disgusted by Halverson's involvement with the Oath Keepers. The Department of Health and Human Services launching an advertising campaign encouraging people to get the updated booster. New vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna have been formulated to protect against the most common Omicron variants, making people sick. The ads target people 50 years and older who account for 86% of COVID hospitalizations and 96% of deaths. A pretty cool opportunity for anybody interested in skilled labor. Check this out, a 53-foot tractor trailer making a stop at Madison College's Truex campus to help spark an interest in welding. People could stop by and even practice welding by using virtual reality equipment there. Recent data shows the U.S. will be short by 80,000 welders next year. Mortgage rates have reached their highest level since 2008. Yesterday, Freddie Mac reporting the 30-year fixed rate mortgage is now over 6%. Mortgage rates have been rising steadily since the Federal Reserve began efforts to reduce inflation. The labor market's still going strong, despite some slowing in other areas of the economy. That's according to the latest Labor Department data. The number of first-time claims for unemployment benefits fell for the fifth straight week. Initial claims for unemployment insurance were 213,000 for the week ending September 10th. A federal court will allow a special, mas a special master to review the documents seized from President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Federal senior judge Raymond Deary now has until November 30th to uh, after the midterms to finish. The Trump team suggested Deary and the Department of Justice agreed. The court also rejected the DOJ's bid to resume its criminal investigation into the case. 
The DOJ plans to appeal. Ukraine is investigating a mass burial site found in the Kharkiv region, recently liberated from Russian invaders. President Volodymyr Zelensky visited the city this week, saying he was shocked by the destruction there. He's calling for the world to make sure Russia is held responsible for its actions. The families of two Americans being held prisoner in Russia will meet separately with President Biden today. WNBA star Brittany Griner is currently appealing her nine-year prison sentence on drug charges. U.S. Marine veteran Paul Whelan has served just over two years of his 16-year sentence for espionage-related charges. The White House said months ago it made a substantial proposal to get them home, but there is no sign of any movement at the moment. Fancy a vacation? How about a cruise departing from the Midwest? The Viking Mississippi, a state-of-the-art vessel built to host almost 400 guests arriving at Riverside Park in La Crosse this week. It's one of the biggest ships under the Viking River Cruise label, and it was built specifically for the Mississippi. Its 15-day river cruise from the Twin cities to New Orleans will run you right around 13,000 bucks. A tourist attraction in Milwaukee moving to the East Coast. The sailing vessel Dennis Sullivan is a 137 foot tall flagship. It'll set sail this fall for its new home in Boston. It's been sold to Boston's World Ocean School, a nonprofit sailing organization. The ship's a recreation of a 19th century Great Lakes cargo ship that's been used to teach kids about the Great Lakes since 2000. 20-time Grand Slam champion Roger Federer hanging up his racket. He announced his retirement this week on social media. He won his first title at Wimbledon at just 21 years old. The last few years of his career, though, have been marred by injuries. His announcement comes less than two weeks after Serena Williams gave her farewell to the sport at the U.S. Open. Yeah, it's going to be a warm and kind of muggy day for September. So as you can see, bus stop looking at very comfortable temperatures and then actually getting up to about 80, 81. So really more like mid-August than mid-September. So kind of a short day. Overall, we're going to get up to, like I said, 81 by this afternoon. Cloud cover here and there, but uh, overall, pretty nice day. Biggest chance of rain comes really Saturday night into Sunday. Otherwise, we should be uh, pretty much dry through that time period. And then the 10-day, once we get past this heat by Tuesday, then we could see a pattern change coming with lower temperatures by the end of next week. All right, Greg, thank Thank you very much. Hey folks, enjoy that sunshine today, that gorgeous sunrise on your Friday. We're going to be back in about half an hour with another news and weather update. We'll see you then.